Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be a book haul. I haven't done one in a month. This is my first one of the year. I'm very excited. It's gonna be a, uh, an unboxing for Book Outlet. They had a sale during Boxing Day, which is the day after Christmas. And then I also have ordered, finally received a book I've been waiting for like a month and a half, two months at this point way too long and then I have also a few books that you guys got me so let's go through them so if you don't know I am a book outlet book vlogger friend so I will link my page down below so you can see all the books I have ordered from them in forever and I have a big box they were having a really good sale like all the books were like five dollars and some of them were even less and I got a few books I did open it just because I had to remove two books that are in here because they are going to be in an upcoming video and I didn't want to like spoil it. But otherwise, I haven't really looked at the books. So I'm just gonna grab and go, no particular order. The first one I am seeing was a complete cover buy, which is usually something I do with a lot of mystery thrillers because, you know, I don't like knowing anything about them except if they have good reviews usually. But I saw this one on the website and I just couldn't resist. It is a, a Nearly Normal Family by M.T. Edverson. It's a psychological thriller. That's literally all I know. I, honestly, I just saw the cover and I couldn't resist. So I will let you know. Usually I tend to read a lot of like mystery thrillers during the end of summer and fall, but I might still pick it up beforehand. We shall see, but yeah, I saw it, had to get it. It was very cheap. Let's be real, this was a last second edition. Actually to get like the next level of like, I think it was like spend $100, get 40 off or something. So I needed a few more dollars, so I decided to grab this one. But some of the ones I was really excited to grab, the first one is a nonfiction book that I've seen on so many lists of like, best nonfiction of all time, books you need to read in a lifetime type of thing. Things that are very, very dramatic like this. And this is a nonfiction called How to Win Friends and Influence People. I have heard so many people talk about this and I'm actually curious, it's actually pretty old if I remember correctly, 1936. So I'm curious to see how it ends up with time. Like, is it still like recommendations that would still work nowadays or something? I am always a little, about things that are a little bit more on the self-help side. It kind of seems a little bit like that, but I'm curious to see if it's gonna be like that or not, and if I'm actually going to enjoy this or not. It's just one of those books that I've been meaning to read since forever, so I saw it, I grabbed it. I have been meaning to read this duology for a while too. It's clearly a team here. And I saw book two on Book Outlet, so obviously I had to grab it. Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. I haven't read anything by her in like a while and I've been actually really dying to read, uh, I think it's coming out, it's supposed to come out at the end of the year, the one with the devil and that woman. <laughs> anyway, I'm very excited for that one. So I thought, you know what, I'm seeing something else by her. I've yet to read the first book in this duology. It is a YA uh, fantasy. It's basically like people versus monsters. And I've been avoiding actually spoilers for the last two, three years. So I think it's just time that I actually read it. I feel like people are kind of like having mixed feelings about it, but I've been pretty lucky so far with her books. So got that one. So I don't do this often, but, <laughs> but uh, this was a book that I have read, but I saw a gorgeous edition of it and I don't have a pretty edition, so I got it. I never do this and I've been doing this a lot lately or I mean a lot more than usual. So feel free to judge me. I judge myself a little bit here, but contact by Carl Segan. I have this, this edition and I've been wanting to let other people, you know, read it, but I'm always worried. Will I see it again or not? So now I don't feel bad lending this when I have this gorgeous one to actually replace on my shelf. So yeah. Let's be real, it was really cheap, that's why I decided to get it. But I do really like this book. It is a sci-fi, hard sci-fi with First Contact with Aliens, which is one of my favorite tropes. And uh, it's quite dry, his writing is pretty dry, but the concepts are really, really interesting. So if that's something you are into, I would recommend it. But yeah, this was a complete, ooh, it's a pretty edition of a book I already have and have read, but. I did it. <laughs> Another book that I did read, but I did not own the book, so I wanted to get it, which actually comes with a Walmart price. We see where they get their uh, deals. I'm gonna have to try and remove this in a second. But Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. I have Sight and I have The Toll, but I didn't have book two, so now I do. I can have that complete uh, trilogy on my shelf, and they're all hardcover, which I never ever get 
either. So it's gonna be like the prettiest thing on my shelf because you can see that I have like a mix of everything really. But yes, I'm very excited to finally have this. This is a YA sci-fi series in the utopian world. Uh, basically death is not a thing anymore and they have sites that are there to try and control the amount of people that are in the population and there's a lot of political intrigue. It's actually really, really interesting. I do recommend it if you are someone that maybe doesn't even really uh, enjoy that much YA, but you want to get into it, or if you're someone that you read a lot of uh, YA fantasy, but you want to get into sci-fi. I've been really enjoying this series and I am supposed to read book three like any day now. I wanted to read it in January, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to because of some of my challenges. And then February, by the way, keep an eye out because I'm having a really intense reading month, which hopefully you're gonna enjoy, but yes, uh, I picked this up. I might not have time to read book three next month, but for sure this year. I feel like I'm always hoping I'm gonna have time to read everything and then I don't, but for sure this one is happening like <laughs> soon. Oh my God, this book. Ah, uh, Bridge to, how to say that in English? Terabitia, whatever, whatever. You know, this book, this book. This is a middle grade book that, well, I've seen the movie, which <laughs> not really fun story, but I actually watched it in between classes. I had like a break of three hours and decided, oh, you know, I'm eating and there's this cute little movie. Let me watch it. Mistakes were made. I ended up like literally bawling, which I don't cry that easily, but I was literally crying and then I had to go to class after. It was great. Uh, but yeah, I decided, you know what? Let's torture myself with the actual book because I've never read it. So I'm hoping I will not cry as much, but probably will. Uh, it's just under 200 pages, so it's not a big book, but I've been wanting to try it. When I saw it, I just knew I needed to pick it up, so I did, but yeah. When I feel like crying, I know what to read now. There, next to Emily. Not that she would read it, but you know. This YA fantasy, I haven't heard that many people talk about it. I feel like the reviews have been pretty hit and miss, but I've been meaning to read it. Actually, I did ask for the arc on Ned Galley, which I'm, <laughs> which I didn't get. Um, but this is Wicked Saints. Uh, I just know it's a YA fantasy, so I will be reading it and letting you know, but I just know it is the spine and I'm dying. I love when books have, yes, good covers, but spines are really important, especially if you like tend to put your books, you know, you see the spine more than the cover. So yeah, maybe in a uh, readathon whenever there's a question, because I feel like it's often one of the things to have like a pretty spine. So maybe, maybe. I believe book two came out fairly recently, so I will be able to catch up if I do enjoy book one. Uh, I also picked up California, which all I know is this is a uh, dystopian, nope, post-apocalyptic book, which I had a huge kick two years ago. And I feel like I've had meh luck recently, but I do have some really good ones or ones that I'm really hoping will be good on my shelf. So uh, eventually I know I will go back to that genre, but this one, let's be real, the cover was very appealing to me. I have seen it everywhere, like used bookstores and then on book outlet for a while, but during the sale it was like $2. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> I mean, at that point, when it's $2, do you really have a choice? I think not. So yes, if I don't like it, at least I will have a pretty cover on my shelf. <laughs> well, two books I've been meaning to read for the longest time. The first one, I know people are gonna be like, oh, you're not gonna love this, but I'm pretty sure it's part of my uh, Goodreads reading challenge for 2020. Uh, and it is this book, which I know, fairies, I haven't been lucky, whatever. This is a YA fantasy called Sorcery of Thorns. And the reviews have been pretty hit and miss. I think a lot of people were telling me that there would be a bunch of romance, but you know what? Sometimes I am in the mood and maybe soon, I mean, February, it would be the time to read some romance. But yeah, uh, I have been like on the waiting list for the longest time at my library and I decided, you know what? It's there, let me just grab it. It was not $15, which good deals on Book Outlet for sure, uh, but yeah. I just want to know. And honestly, I actually kind of like the cover, which I usually hate when there are people on my cover, but this one is just like a tiny bit of face, so it's not that bad. <laughs> Do you actually get influenced this badly by the covers? Because I feel like I used to really not care and I've been like noticing a pattern that I'm starting to like care a bit too much maybe. <laughs> Speaking of which, yes, I've been wanting to read this soap opera Space Oprah? Uh, this is <laughs> Space Oprah. I am struggling hard, but this cover is so intense and 
A lot of people were saying that this was a really fun, different sci-fi book, and I do have the ebook, but I keep forgetting about it. So again, it was really cheap during the sale. I was like, you know what? Let me just grab it. That way I will actually be picking it up. And I'm happy I did because I didn't realize how short it was. It's like not even 300 pages, so I can easily read this once again, probably in a readathon or in a challenge uh, upcoming because I am doing, once again, at least one challenge every month throughout the whole year. So things will probably get pretty hectic, but I will announce them as always in my TBR at the end of, for, at the beginning of every month. But yes, uh, I'm very happy with this one because of that cover and I will finally pick it up. Two last second purchases. Uh, the first one is this one. This is the greatest story ever told so far. Where, why are we here? It's just one of those like uh, beginner friendly uh, nonfiction about uh, science, space. And I've been reading quite a few and I kind of wanted to be able to do a guide like beginner's guide, I guess, to those type of books. And uh, I wanted to kind of just let you know which ones are my favorite one, which ones, actually none of them were really terrible. So usually they're all pretty good. <laughs> I will probably notice that there's a lot of repeat from the other ones, but I just wanted to also pick that one up because it had me calling my name. Let's be real, the little bright colors, it's just, I've been in that mood, clearly. And then next one is something I picked up just because I saw it and I was like, you know what, this is actually fun. So this is a fun little nonfiction book, 30 Second Mythology. Uh, this is basically the 50 most important classic myth and it's all uh, explained very, very shortly. So like basically a page or two, which I think is actually really fun. I might also pick that up during a reading challenge or something because I feel like you hear a lot about those type of stories, but then I never really know all of it. I feel like some people know everything and I'm like, oh yeah, I feel like I've heard that no name, name. Uh, but yeah, so I thought it was fun. I feel like I never hear anyone mention these type of books on booktube, so pick that up. Now, uh, the book that I was mentioning that took two months to arrive. Yes, it is finally happening. Uh, this is Starsight by Brendan Sanderson. This is book two after Skyward, which is one of the best Y sci-fi series I have read so far. And I say that after reading only the first book, but I am standing behind that because it's Brendan Sanderson. Uh, actually, I shouldn't say that because the other sci-fi, Y sci-fi series I had read by him, I've only read the first one because I really didn't care for it. It's my least favorite book by him. But this one is bomb. If you're looking to read more Y, more sci-fi, it's funny, it's interesting. The world building is really complex. Actually, the first book made it to my best books of 2019. So I will link that down below if you are interested. I go in more details in that one, but basically finally got it. I ordered it from a book depository because I wanted to get the gorgeous UK edition to match my other one. There you go. So book one and then book two. And yeah, they're just so much prettier than the US edition. So I had to do it, but yeah. Finally, we'll be reading this. I am like really crossing my fingers that I have time to finish this before, before the end of the month. I haven't had a lot of time to actually sit down and read physical books. I've been like relying on audiobooks mostly or books on my Kindle or my phone because things are still pretty crazy, clearly. I've been struggling to even upload, but uh, yeah, pick that up. Very happy it finally made it because I need to know what continues and I want more doom slug in my life, obviously. Huge thank you to Alex. I already ate most of the chocolate, by the way, but he got me two books. First one being this one, which I've been really, really excited to read. Uh, it is actually part of my Goodreads reading challenge in the sci-fi category. And uh, this is this is How You Lose a Time War by Max Lastone. I believe this one you're following two female characters who are kind of uh, rivals in a time war and I believe they fall in love or something, which I'm very intrigued. I'm very, very interested. And again, it's fairly short, so I could totally read this. Actually, I have to read this this year. And I already know in what challenge I'm going to put this in. So thank you. And then also got me Dark Dawn by J. Kristoff, which was one of the best books that I've read also, well, the whole series actually, uh, last year. And I finally have the whole series on my shelf. I'm very, very excited to finally have all of them. If you haven't read this series yet, you need to. It's one of the uh, most intriguing uh, adult fantasy series I've read in a while. Super intense uh, characters. The world building is so amazing. I really hope uh, Jake Christoph actually brings out more books in that universe, but yes. Huge thank you to Michelle for getting me the Puppy War, which I didn't have on my shelf. Can you believe this? Uh, this is also a really fantastic adult fantasy series. I've been like saying it's why in the past, which it's not, uh, but like, I feel like it reads, it's very accessible, but it's very, very dark. So definitely trigger warnings for a 
lot of different things, but uh, obviously a war, right? I really enjoyed the world building and the magic system in here and how the story kind of becomes bigger and bigger. The world basically becomes bigger and bigger throughout the whole series. And book three is coming out at the end of the year. So if uh, you are interested, definitely pick up book one because you're gonna be able to actually binge read the whole thing. So yes, thank you. Huge thank you to Stanley for getting me this book. I have heard so many great reviews. I feel like it's very underrated in the sense that I haven't seen that many people talk about it, but the ratings that I've seen from people that I trust were really, really high. And this is an adult fantasy and it's literally all I know, but I've seen so many people, again, that I follow give it five stars. So I'm like, you know what, that's all I need. I, I will be reading this this year for sure because I'm super, super intrigued to finally get to it and see what the not so hype, but mini hype I've seen uh, is all about. Huge thank you to Karina for getting me a Diary of a Young Girl. I've never read Anne Frank, ever. Uh, I feel like people in school were reading this in English before I was at that level in English. So I never got to actually read it. And I know it's not gonna be like an easy, fun read or anything, but I'm also thinking about putting this in some of my reading challenges for the year. So. Hopefully I will also get to that one this year, but yes, I feel like it's a, like one of those like must read type of things So I will be definitely picking up that one. Thank you so much Thank you so much to Robin for getting me two of my favorite books that I did not own a physical copy of I don't know why it's coming out so weird of uh, the first one being in an absent dream by Shannon McGuire This is my favorite book in the Y fantasy series the we were children uh, this one can actually be read as a standalone, so if you want to give it a shot. I know people either love or hate basically every single one of the books in this series, I feel like. And uh, for me, this is my favorite one. I feel like it's just the one that speaks to my soul the most. And I actually just finished book five as I'm filming this. And uh, I do like it, but I still think that this is way, way better than everything else. Basically everything, you have to read them except this one if you want to like follow the series. This is like a prequel basically. It's also such a gorgeous cover and it's fairly short by the way. So if you want to inflate your numbers for your reading challenge or something, this is a very, very easy read. I just really like her writing. And then there's also Cersei by Madeline Miller, which is such an amazing adult fantasy standalone. Uh, she loves doing retelling. I'm actually curious what her next one is going to be. Uh, but she does those amazing retelling of characters from mythology and just rewrites them even better. And if you have a chance, also the audiobook is amazing for this one. So yeah, definitely would uh, recommend picking up that book if you haven't yet. I think it made it to my best books of 2000, is it 18 or 17? It was really good. <laughs> I haven't filmed in a while and I've been speaking so weird lately. I've been speaking French too much, which I feel like I've been saying literally in every video, but it's true. Thank you so much to Linda for getting me these two amazing uh, middle grade books that I've never read. The first one being Anne of Green Gables, which I feel like everyone knows, everyone has read. I've never seen, I believe they're TV shows or is it movies? I don't even know, but uh, I've been wanting to pick these up because of the hype and they're actually pretty big for uh, children books. This is 370 pages and I know a lot of people like them even as adults. So I will be reading this and that cover is super, super cute. And then there's also The Secret Garden, which is also a very popular well-known book for children, which again, I've never read, which I feel like, was there a movie? Because I feel like I've seen that movie as a kid. So I will be reading both of these again, hopefully this year. Uh, the last book, I don't have the name of the person because Amazon did a boo-boo and they just gave me the paper without the actual paper. So if you are the person that got me this book, thank you so much. And let me in the comment section so I can actually thank you. Uh, but this is Notes on a Nervous Planet by Matt Egg. I've been wanting to read more of his books ever since I've uh, read The Humans by him, which was a really interesting sci-fi book. And then I've also read uh, Reasons to Stay Alive, which is a nonfiction book by him. But I believe this is also a nonfiction about uh, mental health, which was a case with uh, Reasons to Stay Alive. So yes, uh, I really wanted to check that one out. So I will be reading this hopefully again this year. I feel like I keep saying that, but like I've been really in the mood to read and I haven't had a lot of time to do it. So like I'm extra excited to finally get the chance to do it. So <laughs> so those are all the books that I picked up during the month. I haven't had a chance to go to any used bookstores or library sale this month because things were so hectic. I had like literally no time to do anything, but hopefully next month I will have time to do that. But yes, those are the books that I picked up during the last month. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have read any of these, which ones should I put higher on my TBR 
priority list and uh, if there are any books you picked up during the month also let me know I would love to chat about them don't forget to thumbs up subscribe I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in my next video soon bye